Well, 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 well. It is time for another live show right here on Narc Abuse TV Network. So I see the roots of empathy here and others. Let's see who we got here. We got uh, Ann just came in, Ann Crosby here, uh, Ruth, roots of empathy here as well. Uh, looks like uh, April is here as well. So a big, huge hello to everyone. You know, most of the time I get the opportunity. Hold on a second here. Let's do this. I get the opportunity to have the pleasure. How you doing, April? Hello, everybody. Oh, um, if you'd like to let me uh, let me know, let everyone know where you're coming in from. If not, make up a place. You know, maybe you're coming in from Mars or uh, the planet free, mar- narc free or whatever it may be. Uh, let everybody know if you'd like to where you're coming from, your first name or make up a first name, any of the above. We're going to get to our guests in a minute, but I just got to show everybody something real quick. Hold on one second. I am. What does that say? <laughs> what you put in there? Uh, I see a hello. Uh, you guys got some stuff happening there. What you guys got going on there? Uh, okay. All right. So, does that say hull? What did you put in there, April? Hull. Uh, Dr. Dre's is here uh, from the UK. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, from the UK is here. We're going to get to our guest Kate in just a moment, but I just have to do this real quick, everybody. Bear with me. Show some love and show some support for one of our guests. Uh, The Power of Me is here as well from Long Island, New York. This, if you can see it there, I'm going to get a little bit closer. It says uh, Sarah Harrelson. Uh, She was our our last music guest. We've had a number of different guests from all over the place. She uh, she volunteered, like others, to come on and uh, play, uh, make a little mini concert so you can add some music uh, to your playlist. Uh, Find her music wherever you can. She sent me a little thank you package which was awesome i got some uh, stuff here uh feel free to reach out to her so that uh, if you'd like to have some uh she has her music feel free to check out her page sarah harrelson uh, a big thank you to her for coming on and uh, putting a little concert on for uh all of you uh there's some other music that she has there so a big huge from my heart and my entire family my daughters and myself thank you for supporting us and what we're doing and she sent a beautiful note. So everybody, please uh, check out Sarah Harrelson, Sarah Harrelson, and uh, make sure you show some love to all of the artists that have come on and many more are coming on. And we're looking to have a, a one big, huge concert at some point before this season is over with. At least that's the plan. We're going to work that out where everyone that has been on and a few others that have not can get together and give uh, everyone a free live Zoom concert to show appreciation for all of the foolishness that you've had to put up with. Let's get to our guest. What's going on? Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, Let me, let me, let me, let me get myself my, my, my little head and brain in here so we can look like I'm normal. Um, I'm not do you, purple. do you, yeah, do you want to, you beat me to it. Uh, we're doing our purple thing, everybody today. Uh, it wasn't on purpose. It just happened that way. Yeah. So it just, just happened that way. All right. Enough of the music. What I want to do is, is I want everyone to know that I made a serious error first time that I did not catch myself and I scheduled this show at the wrong time for you. And so I never, I feel so bad that I did no, that. I and no, I, I literally did not catch it until last night when I was going over your information. So Kelly is here, I believe. I look at, uh, does that say Kel? Is this this Kel? Yeah, Kel. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, feel free to say hi to your friends. Danny Smith just rolling in. Uh, Danny Smith, 74. So I'll give her a big wave out to her. Danny, uh, so I apologize to you on social media in live real time right now that I did not catch that it's 6 a.m. for you in Australia. (laughs) That's okay. I'm I'm normally an early riser anyway, but it's fine. Wow. Okay. All All right. Uh, I will make this up to you. I I haven't exactly exactly figured it out, but one day you will get a notice, uh, a notice, get a message from me notifying you that I want you to be a part of some other show or something else. 
uh, to try to make up for this because uh, 6 a.m. in the morning, wow, I don't even do shows at 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, you, you are truly a, a survivor and a thriver that's out to spread awareness to get up this early, <laughs> to, get up this early <laughs> to do a show with me. Uh, uh, this is not like you're doing BBC or something like that, so, or, <laughs> or Sky News. So, but thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. There are a number of things uh, that we can touch on uh, in the time that we will have today. And the audience, uh, audience, please, all of you that are here and the ones that are rolling in, um, uh, does this say Heal, Thrive, and Empower uh, is here as well, just came in, and others that are here. Feel free to ask as many questions as you like because, you see, Kate is a professional coach. She can answer anything. Any. <laughs> I told you I was, yeah. was going to do this to you. I was going to yeah, mess with you. <laughs> So uh, feel free to ask Kate anything you like. Uh, consider it uh, your your brief consultation with Kate uh, from Australia. Uh, you're in Sydney, Melbourne. Where where are you? Yeah, so I'm about an hour north of Sydney. Okay, all right. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to narcissism, mm. that's what I really wanted to discuss with you, of course, today. Mm. As a whole, not just one given aspect. So what I've decided to do is, because you trust me, mm. <laughs> she goes, mm. I don't know if I really, that was a great idea. But yeah, I don't know what you're going to ask me, but we're, no. we're purple partners, and because, uh, because you trust me, let's do this. I'm going to mention a word to you, and let's do this as if we're talking to people who are beginners and understanding narcissism. Mm. Though we have some truly experienced individuals in our audience today and that are viewing, they will chime in as well if they're still able to be here with us. Uh, Anne and uh, Art for Annie and others that uh, have passed through and that are here uh, will be able to chime in. So let's do this. I'm going to ask, I'm going to say a word or ask you a question, and then you can go ahead and explain it and uh, help others to understand what they're going through if they're just beginning their journey or if maybe we need a refresher so that we stay no contact, let's kind of have a discussion like that. And anybody else that's listening here that's uh, viewing this, feel free to open up the chat and uh, participate as well. So here we go. Mm -hmm. First question. When it comes to a relationship mm -hmm. that is toxic, how would you describe a relationship that is toxic? Yeah, and, and that's that's a great question because um, I think, you know, obviously my specialty is around narcissism, but having said that, toxic is toxic and abuse is abuse. So toxic for me is when we, and I, and I actually did a post on this on Instagram where, you know, things like we're walking on eggshells around our partner so we can't be our true self around them and we're, we're constantly tiptoeing. If I say this, how are they going to react? Um, if I don't do this, how are they going to react? Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's that tiptoeing and eggshell. It's um, not being, feel like you, you're heard, not being your true self. Um, it's, you know, all of those sorts of things where, um, you really feel like you're losing yourself. And I think that's the big thing for me. That's how I felt in my relationship was that I'd gone from what I thought was my true self to a position where I completely lost myself. So a, a healthy relationship should be one where you're actually growing together, but you have that what we call interdependence. So you want to be independent and still have yourself and your you know your life and your ability to lead a fulfilling life but you're still able to depend on that person for emotional support where required but a toxic relationship is where it becomes you know what we call codependent where you actually depend on that person for all of your emotions and if they're in a bad mood then you know what can i do to be able to mm -hmm. uh, to change it to turn it around right um, yeah, so it's it's not that healthy connection. It actually becomes where you're enmeshed with that person um, yeah. and you're not living as your true self. For me, that that's the key of a toxic relationship. It actually doesn't really matter. And I know we get bogged down in on, a lot of people get bogged down in having that definition of are they a narcissist or are they a sociopath or are they a psychopath? Actually, it doesn't really matter 
what the if they actually have a diagnosis or not because toxic mm -hmm. is toxic and if you're finding those sorts of scenarios coming up in your relationship it's toxic um and it actually doesn't matter what that person if they actually have a, a personality disorder or not so when it comes to the actual labeling of it it in the mm -hmm. bottom line it really doesn't matter um you're getting some agreement with that on the screen yeah. uh because yeah. um do you see what that says there i don't know if you yes. see that yeah, so, yeah, the power of me. So if you can't be your authentic self without ridicule or criticism, it's toxic. You need to be able to be yourself within a relationship. And if you can't, bottom line, it's, it's toxic and it's yeah. not healthy and you're not growing within that relationship. And, and we're not talking about that somebody is so super sensitive they can't take advice, but I think, the, was it the power of me? Says it correctly. We're talking... <laughs> ridicule and criticism. Ridicule. criticism there's no room in a healthy relationship for that based upon what you're you're highlighting to us right now so and that's it, go ahead and, please and it has to be i mean criticism you know we all need to um and i don't think in a healthy relationship there needs to be critique you know we need to take on if somebody says to us look you're doing this and it, you know and it's hurting me yeah we need to be able to take that on but it shouldn't be in the form of criticism it yeah. should be constructive in the in the purpose of not bringing you down about growing and healing and and coming together as a couple yeah playfully teasing and, and loving one another uh through playfulness is one thing but uh to to belittle someone uh, or anyone or anyone connected to them uh, there's that's not how you build a loving relationship i'm glad you laid that out uh, you got some more on the screen if you want to address that too there's something else there if you want to if you see that um, you, you now start starting to see toxic, but haven't left what's happening. Um, so I guess, is that April? So you're saying you're starting to see that there's some toxicity in your relationship, but you haven't left yet. And what's happening with that? Is that, is that what your question is? So April, let us know whether you're making a statement or if you, 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 uh, want to share some more, uh, with us and we can, uh, we can, uh, get a better understanding of of that statement. But thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. Feel free to share uh, while we have uh, um, Coach Kate with us uh, today. I I'm, I'm going to ask you this next uh, point of reference. Again, a lot of people are, again, are starting their journey. Many of them watch this network, Dark Abuse TV Network, and they watch this show and the other shows that are here and that will be coming on. They watch because they want to get a better understanding of what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Is it is it them, mm -hmm. or are, are they being the bad person? Uh, so 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 bef before you hand on that statement, I just want to ask you this: We just talked about the to toxic. Look at me; I just lost my tongue, and it's not six a.m. here. I just I, just uh, not the toxic ex aspect is what we kind of touched on. But now I want to ask you this: Some people are trying to wrap their brain around this love bombing that takes place by those who are abusers. Explain love bombing as if we literally are starting a whole new discussion, which we are, for those who are beginners to understand what they're experiencing. Mm. And this is a tactic that um, is used by narcissists. It's, it's through, you know, I would say probably 100% of people who have been in a narcissistic relationship have been loved bombed in the beginning. And what it is is it's, it's that... It's somebody that wants to enmesh with you straight away. So it's the constant texting. It's the gifts. It's the, you know, somebody saying to you very quickly, I've never felt this way before. That's a huge red flag. If somebody ding, 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 bad, bad. Yeah, bad, bad. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's all those sorts of things where you just feel like, and it's almost like um, you'll be in that situation where, you'll be um, feeling like you've met your soulmate and actually what they're doing is they're mirroring you. So they find out all of those things that you like and dislike and they actually mirror them back to you. So they, they almost become you. So what you're actually falling in love with is actually wow. yourself, <laughs> which is strange. Um, that's why it becomes, um, it, it happens so quickly, I guess. So yeah, that's, that's really what love bombing is. It's, it's that, someone wanting to enmesh with you very, very quickly. And we know that 
at the time it, it feels amazing and, and I think it feels amazing if you're somebody who is has that self-love deficit so it's sort okay. of filling that hole in the in the soul that you have so if you don't necessarily feel that good about yourself somebody coming in and saying you're amazing yeah. You know, right. I've never felt this way about anybody before. It fills that void that you've got within yourself. Um, I know now, having healed myself up, if somebody comes in and they start love bombing or wanting to move very, very quickly, it's an mm -hmm. instant red flag for me. Um, yeah. Because healthy relationships actually take time to develop. So you don't, you know, they really, it takes time to know if our morals and our values and the way we think about life are mm -hmm. all aligned because we know that um, true love isn't just about all of those initial lovely feelings oh, and being over, attracted overnight, to somebody yeah. and all of those sorts of yeah. things. It's about an enmeshment of values and that takes time. It takes time to work out. Um, I actually had a psychologist say to me many years ago, it takes actually three years to work out if somebody's a, a good fit for you. So if somebody's coming in initially and they're love bombing and they're giving you all those things and um, it, it's a huge red flag, it, it, yeah, you really want to take your time, especially if you've been in a narcissistic relationship before, you need to take your time to get to know somebody and, and not fall into that trap of being love bombed. You have uh, you have more on the screen, uh, Coach Kate. Uh, there, for the power of me, I think you should probably turn that into a hashtag. Says love bombing is tricky. Uh, you should make that a hashtag or turn it into a shirt uh, or an ebook for uh, for for nine ninety nine. That that's uh, pretty good. Uh, do you see what it says there? Feel free to comment on that, Coach. Yeah, and that's exactly right. So they're going to say what they think you want to hear. So that's almost like what I've said. They they. They basically become you. They mirror you. So they find out all those parts of you that um, are missing and, and you need to be filled, and they do that, and they're very good at it. And it's they actually – it's interesting, um, Paxton, because people say narcissists don't have empathy. Actually, what they have is what we call cognitive empathy. So um, they have this ability to rationally think, what do I need to do in this scenario? What do I need to say? Yeah. What do I need to yeah to do and to fake to be able to get that person on yeah. board? So it's actually cognitive empathy. So they're very, very good at it. You, you have laid out so well because uh, for those who have just joined, uh, this is Narc Abuse TV Network. Uh, however, right now you're watching the Narc Abuse TV show. Uh, we have the Coach Jess show that comes on the weekend, a number of other shows. Uh, three to five that will be uh, appearing over the next few months before we end our second season. Uh, this is something that my daughters, uh, who are 28 and 30, came up with, and I am the face of it. So uh, this is all free for you, free live uh, TV, as it were, free live shows on narcissism, relationships, and recovery, uh, as well as uh, we have free live Zoom events with uh, psychologists, therapists, and a number of others that you will be seeing more of, many of them pre-recorded, and many of them that will be live events that's open to up to 500 people for the public, all found right here on Narc Abuse TV Network. Uh, nobody gets paid to come on, and nobody uh, uh, pays me to be on. This is all free to spread awareness concerning narcissism, relationships, and recovery. Um, if we can, uh, you talked about... Uh, toxic uh, relationships, uh, love bombing. But let's do this for the fun of it. How would you personally describe the love bombing you experienced in your life that you had to deal with? How would you personally, emotionally even describe it to help those who are beginning their journey to get free from the narc? Yeah, so um, my experience with a, a narcissist was my ex-husband. So I met him actually when I was 21. Um, I went hey, don't, 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 don't come on here and start lying because you, you're like 22 right now. So don't even <laughs> you, you just did, you I said wish. that you said that like you were like 100 years old. What? I was 21. It's like it's yeah, long, so long know. ago. Whatever. So, <laughs> all right. Speaking to a senior citizen, don't even try to pull that on. So 21. All right. So you were 21. Yeah, Go ahead. So I, I was young. Um, we were together for a little bit. Um, it was very intense. The chemistry for me was extremely intense. 
from, um, from the beginning from the very beginning it was intense it was very intense from the beginning oh. um oh. yeah so it was a it was a very initial intense attraction um i actually went overseas um the, the relationship ended and, and i came back after after being overseas and we started seeing each other again and again it was mm -hmm. extremely intense so the love bombing for me was um you know, numerous gifts turning up at my house with a bunch of flowers at nine o'clock at night. Whoa. Um, taking me out to dinner all the time, telling me that he'd never felt this way before. Oh, wow. Um, that I was different to other girls. Now, that's a huge red flag. But when you're young and you're in your 20s, as a father of daughters, know. as a father of daughters, I'm going to say, and as a guy, okay, don't fall for that one. Don't, don't fall for that one. <laughs> like, he tells every girl that. It's like, I, I know. Okay. And but you're making a point. You're in your 20s, so it sounded you good. Know. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know what um, toxic is. I'd never heard of narcissism. I I didn't know it existed in my 20s. Um, and because I fell so hard for him, I believed everything that he said to me. I, I didn't second guess it because why would you? It was, you know, it was my, it was my second serious relationship, but probably... Mm -hmm the mm -hmm. most intense relationship that I'd had and probably have ever had. Um, so I, I had no reason not to, to believe what he was saying to me. Um, so that's what love bombing was for me. It was just that intensity constantly messaging me. I can't stop thinking about you. What are you up to? Mm. Yeah, it, it was full on and I got, I got enmeshed in it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the thing for me was that I felt that, that really what that was, was, was what a soulmate was, that it was that you can't live without that person. Um, I didn't realise at the time that it was actually toxic. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand that healthy relationships have that interdependence. I thought that when you're away from someone and you can't stop thinking about them, and when I went overseas, I couldn't stop thinking about him. I tried to move on with my life and... I, I couldn't get him out of my head. And I thought that meant you were oh, in love. I was in love. That means he's the one yeah. for me because I haven't stopped thinking about him. I didn't really understand yeah. all about trauma bonds and addiction and, you know, how you get addicted to the trauma bonds. So, um, but yeah, that's in, act, in, act, in actuality, he was like a wart, huh? He was like a, <laughs> a wart or <laughs> he was like a cut that wouldn't go away. It, he was a thorn in my side. Thorn, yes. I thought he did. <laughs> but actually, that's better than anything I just said. He was literally like a thorn in your side that became uh, something that you needed to, to move in a different direction from, not toward, but away from. You started to see the light when? When did you, what was it that moved you in a position that the love bombing was starting to lose its power and you began to understand that you were dealing with something that was unhealthy emotionally. Mm. That took a long time. That took what, a lot what's of long, time. What's long to you? What do you mean by saying a long time? So that helps yeah. those who are going through it right now. Yeah, so that it, it took years, Paxton. So we oh. we got married in 2008. Um, you know, he was he, what I thought he was the love of my life. Mm -hmm. um, Six months into the relationship, my whole world was crushed. I found out that he cheated on me mm. um, and I left, but I returned because I found out I was pregnant because we'd been trying for our first baby oh, wow. um, and, and things were swept under the rug, honestly. Um, I just wanted to believe that um, it was a one-off, um, that it was a mistake. I'd I think my gut was telling me things were very, very wrong, but I didn't, I didn't want to see it because I was so in love with him and I didn't want a divorce and I wanted my family to be together. Mm -hmm. um, and then I didn't leave until 2013 when my, I had a second child and I didn't leave until my youngest was nine months old. So that's where, and, and you know what, I actually didn't even understand at that time that what I'd been dealing with, with was a narcissist or that it was actually toxic. He was a serial cheater and that's, that's what I thought yep. that I was dealing with. And so yep. when he told me at the time, I found out some evidence that he'd been doing it again. I found a second phone and um, he said, I can't guarantee that I'm not going to do it to you again. And I said, well, I have to leave then because I could see that it was affecting my mothering. 
to my children. Wow. So I left. But I had no idea. And even years after I left, I think it was probably three years after I left, that I realised I started getting some counselling. And she mm -hmm. said to me, this, we have to, I have to stop you here, but you, you were living in a domestic abusive relationship and it mm -hmm. was completely toxic. Yeah. So I had no idea that that's what yeah. I'd gone through. Um, which is probably why I'm so passionate now about helping other people Good because I've suffered for so many years and didn't realise what I dealt with. I thought it was just cheating. I didn't realise it was, you know, so more insidious than that. When it comes to you being 21, mm. when you embarked on this relationship, intense relationship, what year was that? I think it was 2001. From 2001 to when you literally walked away from it, how long did that take? What's the time frame in between? The time frame in between. So we were, um, I was with him for a total of nine years. Nine years out of your life, almost a decade, you experienced something that others, some of them decades, 30, 40 de years, de uh, three or four decades, excuse me, 30, 40 years of dealing with someone who literally is not just a serial cheater. They are a serial destroyer of lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their, yep. whole po their whole purpose is to inflict pain. Yep. Not on themselves, but on others. Matter of fact, look at the screen. Uh, if you would, please, uh, uh, Kate, uh, others are agreeing with you. Uh, yeah. The power of me says me too. They, they experience that. As you can see there, April says, I had no idea. Truly painful is what mm -hmm. April says. You can relate to that, no doubt. Absolutely. We, we, I think when you're not like that yourself and you have no yep. idea that yep. narcissism exists, you can't yep. fathom that other people operate this way. Yep. <laughs> it's just not in your psyche. Um, and it's not until you start coming across. And, you know, when my, my marriage ended in 2013, there wasn't the awareness out there about narcissism. Um, I wish there had have been. I'm in a really amazing community now, and I will probably talk about it with my course that I'm doing. But I wish I had that years ago because I felt so alone. I had no idea what I was going through. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is amazing and, and amazing for, you know, people like you getting out there and talking about it, that people realize they're not alone. Don't tell, no, don't tell nobody I'm doing this. <laughs> don't tell nobody my daughters and I are doing this. Okay, go ahead. I'm just <laughs> yeah, no, it's Has, really hashtag, hashtag tell a friend about Kate. Tell them about Kate and, and myself. All right, go ahead, Kate. I had to throw that in there. Go ahead. Yeah, I just think it's um it's great that now people are talking about it because that's the that's the crucial thing. People feel so alone with what they're going through, um, and it, it it's not it's now being talked about not more, and it wasn't back in the time that I left. People just didn't understand it. People would think, well, just just move on. They don't understand the complexity of these abusive relationships and the mm -hmm. abuse cycle that goes and, with it. And it was interesting, I've only been doing this show for a little over a year, uh, 13, 14 weeks now. Um, I have come to see that many who say just move on either mm -hmm. don't know uh, or they're in it themselves and that's how they're existing. They just mm -hmm. let everything, it's, oh, no, you said it, sweep it under the rug. They've been sweeping it under the rug so long, they just say, you know, why don't you just do the same? Uh, but not everyone wants to be the emotional punching bag for an abuser. Some people literally, uh, once they see that that person has crossed that boundary line, uh, that they need to do the proper thing and, and move forward. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to, are you ready? Because I'm going to do something real quick here. We have gone 30 minutes and 14 seconds thereabout, and we've talked. And this is the perfect time to ask you this question. Hmm. Were you nervous when we got started? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous. Yeah. I couldn't sleep last night, Paxton, because I was so nervous. <laughs> I'll let you go 30 minutes before I ask you that question. <laughs> but I, but I, I knew what you... Okay, so everybody, just so you know, a little heads up. You know, we saw each other and talked a little bit before we, we came on. And so, you know, you said that to me at first and I let it go. I didn't say anything, but I love it when my guests are nervous because I watch them just slowly take over the show and just keep talking. 
<laughs> and you you yeah. literally have been doing that. Go ahead. You have a way, I think, Paxton. You you just oh, ease us in, and that was great. <laughs> well, so, yes, yeah, so hey, I was very nervous. You know, we might as well keep it smooth. If you hey, as my father would say, if you you might as well be funny if you ain't got no money. So we might as well have some fun because I can't pay you to be on. <laughs> so um, what I was going to say is this type of a show, though, helps a, a number of people. But uh, we have some other things on the screen there. I just want to touch on before I, I'm going to ask you another question. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Annie says, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, for me, I can see it. But it says uh, so many people don't know. Some are lucky. The others just not there yet. Mm. And uh, April says, painful, but truly living now. Uh, so it was painful for her, and she's truly living now. But Anastasia, which is art. Did I, did I say Annie? I may have said that. Please forgive me, Anastasia, if I said Annie. Anyhow, uh, art for Annie, uh, dot RU. Everybody, please like, comment, share, follow. She was my guest last week on the show. Uh, feel free to uh, comment on what she mentions there that some, so many people just don't know uh, and others they are just not, they're just not there yet. So feel free to comment on that. Yeah, and um, I know there was another comment before about did people believe me? So uh, if I... Yes. If I, uh, yeah, so um, if I'm honest, I have, you know, I'm lucky I have a, a wonderful group of very close friends that I call sisters who did believe me, but... Um, I I didn't tell people. I kept my story to myself for a very, very long time. It's only been in the last year that I've really felt like I can share my story and what I've been through. So um, that was, yeah, something that I had to process. So I probably didn't tell people and I probably covered for him for a very, very long time to try to make out, oh, our divorce is amicable and it's fine and we're doing everything for the kids and really the reality wasn't like that. But I I didn't want, I had that fear of judgment from, from other people so I didn't actually share my true story with people. So only my very, very inner circle know about my mm -hmm. story. Um, but then, yeah, the other question about some people don't know, yeah, they, they don't know what they're going through at all. And I think if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, nine times out of ten you do have that sort of codependent type personality or you're an empath so you naturally want to fix people you naturally want to be a giver so you don't know and you start to blame yourself you, you constantly think about what can i do to fix this um what am i doing wrong instead of looking yeah. at the other person and seeing them for what they are you actually internalize it and see it as your problem and how can you fix it and I think that's why a lot of people stay stuck. You, you were, you, you said something very interesting that may be very helpful to others. You mentioned the fact that you were covering for him. I, mm -hmm. I like the way you said that. But mm -hmm. What do you mean when you say that? Because somebody may be doing that right now going like, oh, wait a minute, I can kind of relate to what, what Kate just said. So what do you mm -hmm. mean, coach, coach, when you say that? So in the relationship, so when I went back to my marriage because – at that time, everybody knew he had cheated on me um, and I went back. So I felt like I felt I felt so much shame and so much guilt, which I now realise that wasn't my shame and guilt to carry. That was actually his, but I, yeah. I carried it. And so I pretended like I was happy and everything was fine and I covered in the relationship. Um, coming out of the relationship, I again covered, obviously not to my, you know, very, very close friends that I have mm. and my family, they knew what was happening, but to like a lot of acquaintances and people that's, you know, mothers at school, I covered and I made out he was a fantastic father and wow. we, we got on and it was all amicable. Wow. And I realise now that um, I was trying to, my thought at the time was I was trying to protect my children but right. what it was, was I was actually eroding myself. I wasn't um, mm -hmm. speaking my truth, which meant that I was internalising all of this anger and resentment because I, I couldn't be true. And, it, and it's not like now I go out and, you know, spruik that he's this awful person in the general public. I mean, obviously I have my Instagram page, but 
I, I'm not afraid now if somebody asks me to, to say the truth because it is the truth. I mean, if yeah. I say that he was a serial cheater, I'm not stating anything that's not a fact. <laughs> yeah, it was right. a fact. Yeah, so I, I definitely covered and it was all about what I thought was protecting my kids. Um, but I was losing myself in the process, which wasn't healthy. That can happen is, is pretty much what you're saying. An individual can find themselves, male or female, uh, in whatever stage of a relationship a person uh, may be dealing with, work-related, uh, siblings, whatever it may be, intergenerational narcissism, whatever it may be, covering for the other person, and at mm -hmm. the same time shrinking themselves mm -hmm. uh, is what you're, what you're describing there. That didn't work for you, did it? Absolutely not. I lost myself. I had this internalized resentment and anger and I was flipping in between going from um, being in what we call functional freeze, which is where you disassociate and you feel numb and you feel depressed and then going up into the sympathetic nervous system where you start feeling angry mm -hmm. and yeah. resentful and you have anxiety and all at the expense of what to protect him? Really? Did he deserve it? No. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, what am I doing here? Why am I trying to help him? I, I need to be free. Uh, you I need to, to, right? A person has to make that statement. Maybe I should just have shirts that I just ha give out to everybody. Just here, you know what? You need to be free. But just wear this shirt and look at it in the mirror. Because yeah. many victims begin to feel that they have to stand up for the narc. They yeah, feel they have to save the narc. What, what do you think about that? What, what is your thoughts on that when a person feels they need to do that? Is that the, really the road that they need to go down? No, absolutely not. But at the time, it feels so real. It feels mm. like that's what you have to do. But what it actually is, is a trauma bond. Um, so in a narcissistic relationship or, you know, really in any kind of toxic relationship, we have these trauma bonds feel, um, formed. It's often called, you know, you might have heard of Stockholm Syndrome, like yeah. hostage type syndrome where you actually mm -hmm. start to associate with the perpetrator and you start to take on their traits and empathize with them. And it's, it's not the, the person's fault um, because what happens is in a narcissistic relationship, when you have the love bombing and then you have the devaluing and then you have the, the fact where they discard you and then they try to hoover you back in, which is basically like love bombing again, um, you secrete all these different hormones. So in those love bombing phases, you have oxytocin, which is that feel-good hormone and dopamine, and you feel amazing. And then when they start to devalue you and discard you, you get cortisol pumping out. And what happens is you have that continual ebb and flow, highs and lows of those hormones, and your body becomes addicted to it. Yeah. So it's actually, it becomes out of your control. And it and there's been research studies to say that that addiction to that trauma bond and those hormones is 10 times more powerful than the addiction to heroin. So I think um, it's a real thing. It's not the I, right thing to do, but breaking that addiction is extremely difficult to do. You're telling me that I'm looking at a person who was a former addict is what you're telling me right now. As scary as that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, seriously, that's just... You know what? I think you need a course that you need to make, <laughs> and that's what you need to call it: calling off former addicts of narcissism, <laughs> yeah. and, and take and take like a seven week course with you, and you help them break free. Uh, do you, I don't I, I'm I can see just about every well I can see everything that everybody's writing, and uh, I am going to get caught up to everybody that that wrote something here in just a moment. But I'm going to mm -hmm. pivot to something that that uh, April I think just wrote. April said, "Let's be free." So April again, mm -hmm. you're coming up with some great hashtags. I'm going to have yes. to call you the, the hashtag right. queen here. That, that should be a hashtag. Um, but um, do me a favor, please, uh, Kate. I'm going to go back up here to some other comments. Uh, we just talked about what, what uh, Anastasia said. Uh, some, so many people don't know, and others are just not there yet. April said painful, but truly living now. So we, uh, we can end up being in a position, an individual can end up being in a position that they were dealing with toxic people in many different ways. Uh, and it can be painful, but eventually you're saying there is light of hope uh, that they can move toward. But let me, let me mention this to you. Ocean Girl 1900, she says, I helped a good friend of mine out of a 
uh, domestic violent relationship with a narcissist. Uh, her ex-husband hates me with a passion and blames it on me. That's the mindset of these people that are toxic and they don't want to get better. They want to blame anybody and not take accountability. Is that how that works? Absolutely. So what we know about narcissists now is that they have these very intense inner childhood wounds. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a wound. And what they try to do is it's almost like, you know, you put a scab on that wound and they use all these. And, we, and what I'm learning now is um, what we call internal fam family systems where mm -hmm. we have all these protective parts that come up. So for a narcissist, they have these very intense childhood traumas. They have extreme protector parts that come up that we could never actually break through ever. And their protector parts, you know, things like lack of empathy, lying, manipulative, controlling, gaslighting, all those things that we know narcissists are. Um, and that becomes their actual true self. Um, we, we can never get down to what the actual original true self was because those protector parts are so strong. Mm -hmm. So in order to protect this armour that they have, they will never actually admit fault or they'll always blame other people because to be able to, to look into yourself and see that you have flaws and errors means that you have to have insight into yourself and narcissists are incapable of doing that. Um, the other thing with narcissists, which it can be a little bit controversial because we think that they're, project, they're, they're doing all these things because of us or because they want to actually intentionally do it to us. But actually the reality is they're actually just trying to protect their inner childhood wounds. The impact of those protector parts, so lack of empathy, controlling, gaslighting, you know, no remorse, all those things entitled nature, the impact of those is that it hurts the individual that they're projecting them onto. But the intention is actually probably never to actually hurt that individual. It's just trying to protect those inner childhood wounds that they have. Um, actually. Is, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I apologize to you. Now, you're the diva for the day. You don't have to apologize to me. Uh, I, I am your, your, um, your co-host servant, so it's okay. <laughs> you, can, you can talk over me. Everybody does. It's okay. No one watches these shows for me. I say that every time. But I was going to go to the next comment. That was beautiful points that you brought out there for everybody. We are into 43 minutes of a show. Why do I keep mentioning the time? Is because we are going to um, go for about an hour here, everybody. Uh, and then this group chat uh, with uh, Coach Kate, uh, we will come to an end. But I got to go to the power of me. The power of me said, uh, I believe my narcissist was so broken and so rough around the edges that if I showed him real love, it would be okay. He would be okay. Your thoughts mm. on that? Mm. This is a big one. So we often think the more that we love the narcissist, that they'll change. But actually, narcissists are takers. So if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you're likely to be codependent and mm. your nature is to give and give and give and give. And a yep. narcissist natural in, intention is just to take and take and take. So the more you give, the more they'll take. So the more that you love a narcissist, as much as your intention is that they're going to change, they actually mm -hmm. won't. And what will happen is you'll just become more depleted and their reserve is going to be, you know, their cup's going to be more and more filled and yours is going to be completely depleted. Well, that doesn't sound good. Okay, no. so, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just had to say that. Uh, don't mind me, I'm a guy. Guys are goofy. Ladies, please remember that. Don't let a guy fool you and tell you he's cool and he got it together. He doesn't. Okay. We're all goofy little boys. Okay. So art for Annie, my uh, beautiful friend Anastasia says, yes, we gaslight ourselves and become our own flying monkey. Mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of, uh, let me roll this up here so I can see it on my monitor. Uh, for the sake of, it complicates everything for us. Uh, when we start to gaslight ourselves, uh, I believe she's highlighting there. Uh, the Absolutely. roots of... Uh, no, go ahead, please. Comment on that. Yeah, we, we do. We gaslight ourselves. So we're being 
gaslit by the narcissist, but then we start to gaslight ourselves. So because we're being gaslit by the narcissist, we actually don't trust our own reality at all. Um, and that's what gaslighting does. We, we don't trust our reality. Um, we rely on them to tell us what's, what's true and what's real. Um, we start to think we're going crazy. So therefore, the, the impact of that is that we start to gaslight ourselves. We start to say, oh, this is happening, but, oh, it, you know, that, that's not as bad as what I think it is or that didn't really happen <laughs> or they didn't mean that. <laughs> they're, they're just saying that because they're hurt or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's a reality. Hey, being so, double gaslit. <laughs> so... Don't mind me. I'm just being weird. So if we're gas, we can gaslight ourselves. Mm. And then we could probably turn right around. And if we have children, we'll start gaslighting them. And their reality, we'll just start doing it to other things with because we're just we're we're watering down the behavior of someone who is toxic, who needs help. Mm -hmm. And before we know it, we're enabling and doing the same. And we'll create an entire generation of people who will start to do the same. That has to stop. It That's has not to. good. That's bad. Because people and will like just justify bad behavior and think it's okay toward children in a mm -hmm. community. That's bad. Absolutely. And I think that for me was why hmm. I left because okay. I knew that I didn't want that pattern to continue yeah. on with my children. Um, and we know that intergener it's intergenerational trauma and that continues on up to seven generations. But it just takes wow. one person to actually break that cycle to stop yeah. that trauma continuing on. All right. Uh, you're on a roll, Doc. I'm, I'm sorry. I just called you a doc. Oh, <laughs> well, why not? Hey, you know what? This is Doc Kate now. Uh, she plays a doc on 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 uh, IGTV, not in real life. She's she's a coach in real life. Okay, so coach, uh, let's go to the next one here. Uh, let's see here. The roots of empathy says abusive love bombing soulmates with toxic brain. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are too much. You know what? I'm always prepared when I do a live to try to be as serious as. No, I don't. Uh, this is funny. Okay, so abusive love bombing soulmates with toxic brain diarrhea. <laughs> triple triple XL umbrella needed. And then let's be free is from April. I that's a really the roots of empathy. That should be a book maybe, or you should just join the documentary that somebody's making here on our our uh, one of our <laughs> guests. That I is pretty that. deep. That was pretty deep. Okay, I'm going to go down here to, uh, and thank you everybody that's here, that's joining in. I appreciate it a great deal. Uh, Anastasia says, trauma bond and also you protect that hurt, lost child within a narcissist. That a mm. trauma bond does that. Any, any thoughts on that? Mm. I think, um, yeah, I think that's 100% right. We're almost trying to you know, mother or father, that inner wound of the narcissist. And especially because often they, in that initial phase, they'll, they'll sort of play the victim. That's a, that's a real narcissist. Ah. Yeah, they'll play the victim. They'll tell you about their past and about how, you know, in my instance, um, his father was an alcoholic. His mother was very, you know, not emotionally engaged, which I know now that's why he is a narcissist. Um, but they, they tap into that. And because when you have those empath traits, you want to fix and you want to help them and you want to mother them and you see their potential and you think if, if I if I just give them this and they're going to become this person that they're meant to be, you don't realise yeah. that what they're, they're, they're actually manipulating you. <laughs> yeah, I better not have my daughters come home and say, I, I see this guy's potential. I'll go like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, there's no yeah. potential. Yeah. You yeah. Just, it, it is now, I see now. You have to see somebody for face value for what they yeah. are now. Potentials are relevant when you're dating. Yeah, you don't want to, what, how's the expression go? You don't want a project. You want a partner, uh, somebody exactly. you can bu build with, not, not while you're trying to build and they're trying to destroy. That just, that's how most people end up having their relationships or marriages, and they often wonder why they're divorced is because they, they connected with a person who is not a builder. They just mm -hmm. want to tear down. They, just real, they want to damage, destroy, and discard. Uh, yes. And then they end up connecting with people who, who are loving and want to love and nurture and grow, and the two just can't go in the same pot. Uh, one, is, one is a weed and one is 
an actual flourishing plant that wants to bloom. Um, I'm looking again at the screen. Uh, everybody, I'm not ignoring you, uh, but uh, we're almost there with everybody's comments. Uh, Anastasia also highlights the fact that the trauma bond is terribly addicting, or as it were, addicted, and it is a real thing uh, that actually uh, helps her so much to understand that this is a chemical bond. As you just you were talking about that a uh, little bit ago, this is not something that most people give thought to. They just think someone is just acting bad, and then they find out that they're a narcissist. But mm -hmm. they, m most people, really need to give thought to understanding a trauma bond. So they know what they're in. That's mm. just me. I'm not the professional you are. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I think that's why I work so hard now in, in getting rid of that shame and guilt because it's, it's not the person's fault that they're trauma bonded. It's not the person's fault that they're not able to move on as quickly as they would like to. Um, you know, if you're a codependent, you're already beat up on yourself enough in life. You don't need further shame and guilt over why you can't leave a relationship or why you're constantly addicted to somebody or why you're always in fight or flight or depression. Having additional shame and guilt over that is just not helpful to healing. Yeah. Most of the time, people can find themselves beating themselves up emotionally, Mm -hmm. uh, letting themselves and their physical health go, becoming a hermit and isolating themselves as if they were just not good enough. They yes. were not sufficient mm -hmm. uh, to, for that particular person who in actuality uh, was out to damage them or destroy them, use them and discard them and had multiple relationships with others uh, at the same time, uh, never truly committing to being a couple. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that once a person understands what they're dealing with, they need to then really recognize that they have to make a decision, especially as in your case, children were involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's the thing as well is that we become almost, once we find out we're dealing with a narcissist, we can almost become so entrenched in finding out about narcissism and what their traits are. And we almost, you know, I felt like I had a PhD. Binge watch, binge watch everything. Yeah. yeah. On narcissism. And what that does is it's great. We have to, we have to know what we're dealing with. hundred percent. I agree with that because that is extremely validating and healing to know what we're dealing with. But we then become so focused on the narcissist that we neglect ourselves and what we need to come back to and a lot of the work that I do is about okay we know the narcissist is this way we can't change the narcissist they will never ever change and we don't want to rely on the narcissist changing for us to be able to have a happy and fulfilled life right. because that's for, never going to for validation happen. support or whatever for ourselves right absolutely so not gonna, not gonna happen what you're saying is not gonna happen right no no okay. they're, they're there is no therapy or research to suggest that a narcissist can be healed. And again, that's controversial. Um, but at this stage, there is no research to suggest a narcissist. A true narcissist can actually heal because those protector parts from the, the childhood wound are so strong. You can never get through. Um, if they do go to therapy, it's often to get that narcissistic supply. Um, it's not for true healing. So we need to come back to ourselves to say, okay, how can I heal? We know that the narcissist isn't going to change. And if you have a situation where you have children, like in my case, I can't go completely no contact. It's extreme modified contact with the narcissist and coming back to my own healing so that when he does things that um, trigger me, I'm not automatically going into that fight or flight and... Um, I guess, picking the scab off my wound, my childhood wound, to say I'm not good enough or I'm not lovable, I'm right, not worthy. Right, right. Healing yeah. yourself up, healing up your inner wounds yeah. really helps in able to deal with the, with the narcissist in your life because we know they're not going to change, unfortunately. Be because, because if not, then we're talking about a situation that uh, an individual can have their buttons pushed every time they've got to do child uh, visitation. Every time they're, they're constantly having their old wounds uh, kicked around, picked at, uh, subliminally, subliminally, uh, sublime. That's a great group, by the way. Uh, good music. Um, so anyhow, so a number of different things can happen if we are not careful, if we have to have some type of measured contact with them when it comes to child visitation, or, uh, 
custody aspects, divorce, we need to be ready every time we need to deal with them. How mm -hmm. can you give us some advice on how you can, make it per you can make it personal if you wish, but how an individual can be ready when they have to deal with someone? By the way, I see that somebody has a, a question in the question section. I'll get to it in just a moment. But when it comes to having to deal with them, mm. they're coming to pick up the kids. Uh, you got to drop them off. What are some things you go through or that you tell your clients to keep in mind when it comes to having to deal with a narcissist when it comes to parenting? Mm. So one of the things that I've learned through my training is an amazing theory called polyvagal theory. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, yeah. but... Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's extraordinary. So it, it really explains um, Feel how free to explain it to the audience uh, yeah, for me. Okay. Go ahead. If you want to so, touch on it, go ahead. Yeah, so so my background is I actually I have a um, health science degree. So um, I learned all, what I thought I learned all about the nervous system. You know, we have our autonomic nervous system um, and, you know, that's sort of our involuntary nervous system controls things like our breathing and our fight or flight and all of that sort of thing. But I had no idea how it actually really functioned in the context of trauma until I came across um, polyvagal theory, which is part of my course that I do. Um, and it, it's almost like, actually, I've got, I've got this here, but it's, it's like a, a ladder. So we, we view the nervous system. We love props on this show. We so love props on this show. You're the best. Hey, you just went up 400 knots uh, in, in, in the love category. We love you even more. You got props. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, um, yeah, so how the polyvagal system works is we have the autonomic nervous system, which is our involuntary nervous system. Um, and we have this nerve called the vagus nerve, which runs from the back of our head and it comes all through um, our throat, our diaphragm, and right down to um, our gut, basically. And it's the largest nerve in the body. Um, and it's actually responsible for our trauma responses. Now, narcissistic abuse causes trauma in the system because trauma is literally overwhelm to the system. That's, that's, that's what trauma is, and that's what narcissistic abuse causes and then trauma is the thing that we keep replaying in our mind to ourselves where we say you know for me it was I'm not good enough I'm unlovable it's not actually it wasn't actually the narcissist it was the things that I was replaying in my mind about the abuse okay. I'd received mm -hmm. so how how polyvagal system works um, the theory works is that up the top of the ladder um, this is what we call ventral vagal and how you sort of think about it is if you feel safe and connected, you'd be willing to climb to the top of the ladder. So this is the top of the ladder where we feel safe, we feel connected, we're calm, we're able to relate to others. And this actually needs to be taught. So we're not born with this. So we need to be taught by our caregivers or parents. So some people actually never live in ventral vagal because they're constantly down in fight or flight or down in dorsal vagal. So it needs to be taught. If um, we sense, if we're up in ventral vagal and we start to sense a bit of danger, um, what our system thinks is danger, which is often the narcissist because of past experiences, our brain perceives it as danger, we start to dip down this mm -hmm. ladder and we go into the middle section, which is our sympathetic nervous system. So this is where we start to feel anger and we start to feel rage and we've got anxiety and we've got all this cortisol running through our body. If you've been in a relationship with a narcissist or toxic relationship for a very long time, your system will actually sense there's more danger and you dip further down the ladder and you go into what we call dorsal vagal. Um, and this is where we have symptoms of disassociation, numbing, depressed. Um, and, and what your system is actually doing is trying, your brain's trying to keep you safe. So a lot of people feel, I hear so many people say, oh, and I felt like it too, you know, you feel depressed, you feel like you've got no energy, you can't exercise, and you feel so much shame and guilt about that. Yep. You think, what's wrong with me? Why am I so lazy? Actually, it's your system working brilliantly to keep you safe. And if we think about it in the animal world, say like an impala being chased by a lion, they're up here chewing the grass, they're happy, they're connected, lion chases them, they go into um, fight or flight. Actually, it's the opposite, you know, flight yeah, first. I, right. 
Yeah. Yep. And then the lion catches them, they start fighting, and then the system goes, actually, this is even more dangerous. I'm going to play dead. And they go further down. And it, and it's brilliant. That's how a system is designed to work. So once I actually really understood this, it wasn't my fault. My brain, this is how it was processing and how it was working mm -hmm. to keep me mm -hmm. safe. It took so much shame and guilt. So if you're up in this fight or flight with the narcissist all the time, so they say something to you and you instantly go into that fight or flight, your anxiety is peaking, your blood pressure goes up, I work with my clients about putting some strategies in place if they're in that fight and flight. So it's things like tapping, um, which can get their system back online, things like cold water therapy, um, extreme modified contact. So, mm -hmm. you know, having a separate phone that only the narcissist can contact you and you check it on certain days. We can put a whole heap of strategies around that. And then if they're in that dorsal vagal where they feel depressed all the time, then we have other strategies because you can't tell someone who's constantly feeling depressed and depleted, hey, go for a run or, you know, it's just going to be way too much yeah, for their system right. to deal with. So we, you know, things like meditation and so there's lots of strategies that we can put in place so that when that narcissist comes to you, we know that they're never going to change. But mm -hmm. the way that you respond and the way that your system feels we can work on that so that you don't always go into that trauma response of fight or flight or dorsal vagal where you're feeling depressed and numb. There are moments in which um, each one of us deal with circumstances and situation uh, in which we don't have enough information and know how to handle it in the moment. Mm -hmm. You've been able to do exactly what I wanted you to come on and do. Uh, mention and say things that people can take away from this that they can apply to those situations that are challenging for them, uh, that uh, they they don't have a mother or father or uncle or aunt or grandparent to turn to, but they're trying to find a way uh, to live their life in peace and quietly mind their own business, but they're being, you know, as, you, as you know from experience, uh, they're dealing with someone who just wants to cut them off at the knees every time they try to make a move. Uh, yeah. So you've been a breath of fresh air uh, in expressing everything. Uh, are you still nervous? No, I feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what I'm talking about. That's right. You talk about what you know. It's amazing how quickly you'll start to calm down. Okay, so uh, I do want to tell you this. I'll say this to you. There are people who have 20, 30, 40, 50,000, 75,000, 80,000 followers, a million followers. They've been on uh, every big news channel in the world. Uh, they often tell me they don't want to come on because I don't have enough followers. And as soon as I get 10,000 followers, I literally have people write me this. And these are people that a lot of people follow or take their courses. And they won't come on because I don't have enough followers. Uh, and I understand that. But I am always honored by people like you. Because when I say people like you, of course, you know, I'm not talking about your skin tone. When I say people, people like you, I'm such, a, I'm such a weenie head. I mean, you are courageous to do this, and you are generous from the heart to share. And you make this not about you, but about helping other people, not for a dollar amount. And that makes you better in my eyes than those people who are out, at, out to do it only for the money or to sell their course. So I want to thank you so much for being here today. You're an amazing, beautiful woman for doing this. Because you've opened up this chat, and I'm um, everybody, be mad at me today. Sometimes that happens. I may not get to everybody's comment here. Because we have gone one hour and four minutes. And I was going <laughs> to stop in one hour and five minutes. But right now I can't because I do need to mention a few things to you that people have been writing since you've been on and been talking. And thank mm -hmm. you for that information uh, that you just gave us. Um, let's see here. We've got, uh, I just got to run over a few things real quick here. Uh, the power of me. I uh, mentioned the fact that uh, she feels very strongly that gaslighting is intended to confuse the victim and has a, 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 an, uh, an effect also on the children as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Danny, Danny Smith says, are these recorded to watch again later? I have to go and hate to miss it. So, Danny, if, if you're gone now, uh, this will be up for you to be able to, to see it. Uh, that's Danny Smith 74 mentioned that. Uh, and Danny also said uh, that my narcissist went to a narcissist psych, uh, I guess psychiatrist, who said he was not 100% narcissist, but everything he does says differently. 
uh, he still goes regularly to the therapist. So there's a lot of different uh, people who are expressing uh, their thoughts concerning what you've mentioned, and you've opened up some eyes here, Kate, Coach, excuse me, Coach Kate, but for today, Doc Kate. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, I, should, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to get you in trouble. Uh, so Coach Kate, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, many people have, uh, have thoughts concerning what you've highlighted, and it's all good because uh, they were able to learn from you today. I have to mention something uh, from Susan. Susan Schofer, who uh, we just did a live Zoom together on a divorce and uh, a course that she has going on. She's a great supporter of the, the channel. She says, narcissists will never cooperate. Uh, you have to be ahead of them. Uh, she's, she's an experienced private investigator and divorce coach. Uh, she's uh, very experienced. Uh, she is agreeing with you when it comes to dealing with a narcissist. Um, is it possible just from your own, own experience and from the course that you're taking and coaching, is it possible to be ahead of the coach? I mean, be ahead of the uh, narcissist? Is it possible to, because it's kind of what you were just describing, having a separate phone. It's like you're thinking ahead of time. You're pre-planning. Yeah. Yeah. So there's it is. Yeah, there's definitely strategies that you can put in place. Okay. All about as long as it's coming from a place of, and I think we can get so caught up in trying to get back at the narcissist and being one uh. step but it's all about protecting yourself, setting up those boundaries okay. um, to be ahead, to protect yourself. That's first and foremost, protection of yourself. Yeah. I, I just want you to know, uh, Coach Kate, um, I hope you get on other shows. I hope you seek uh, other people that have podcasts. And if you ever are in doubt, uh, you in private can feel free to ask me. I will send you a number of names of people and I will mention to them that they should have you on as a guest. You're excellent. Uh, I do need to say that Susan Schofer, uh, again, a guest that has been on here numerous times, says that she loves this chat. So she loves that's – a, that's a big endorsement, by the way. I'm just letting Aww, you know that. Su you. Susan, if Susan, Susan says that, that's, a, that's, that's very beautiful on her part. Uh, there's other things that are here on the screen, but I got to go over here before you have to go, which I hope you don't at the moment. Uh, you got a question here. How do you navigate parenting with a narc? Who child, whose child has trauma bonded with him. Yeah, that's a really difficult scenario to find yourself in. I don't know if we've got time to talk about the Okay, answer, you know what? But what we before, you, is... before you do that, before you do that, the first thing that popped in my head was, okay, Kate's coming on for a second time because uh, there's no way we got time. And that's a good sub. No, that's a really great question. It's a huge um, topic. That and question what we say is, Parallel parenting. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. That what you know later, what? No. Parallel. Okay. Let's, let's do this. I am going to make note of that question, and I know who it came from. And we're going to do another show together just on that subject and any, any things, anything that uh, stems from that. But we'll, mm, we'll work right. that out. Uh, but if you had to say in a succinct shrink wrap type of a way, mm -hmm. can you at least give a little bit of advice or at least some yeah. thoughts to that yeah. question? So, as I said, parallel parenting is the key. You can't co-parent with a narcissist. And it's about if that child has trauma bonded, it's about as hard as it is staying in your lane and focusing as much as you can on the relationship that you can have with your child without the narcissist in the equation. So very, very difficult and I completely empathise with it. But unfortunately, you can't change that trauma bond in the beginning. The more that you say to the child that your father's like this or your mother's like this, the more they're going to trauma bond because their system doesn't want to hear it. So it's about parallel parenting, which means you stay in your own lane, you don't cross over with the narcissist, as, yeah, as difficult as it is, but, but that's the key. Okay, well, we... We look forward to all the homework you're going to do <laughs> to prepare a show for that. <laughs> like the way I just put you under the bus. Okay. <laughs> no, so, hey, listen, people don't come here to hear me give advice because I don't know anything. Uh, I just love putting on people who know stuff and uh, who are awesome like you who are here just to help uh, and not here uh, to, to try to make money. Uh, leave no contact. Go ghost. That's uh, here we go, everybody. If, you, if you're regular to the show, you know what I'm about to do. Leave underscore no underscore contact underscore go underscore ghost. I just have to do that every time. Uh, plus, it's my show. Anyhow, leave no contact go ghost. Uh, says uh, is telling power of me you are right. And also for a victim 
to question their own reality and mm -hmm. sanity is what gaslighting does. This yeah. uh, is their main goal of the narcissist, is to make their victim think and look that they are going crazy. Your mm -hmm. thoughts on that yeah, before we absolutely. have to go? Yeah, it's absolutely their goal. And the, and the goal is narcissists have so much internal pain, you know, and, and that's the thing. That's where I look at my ex now with so much actually compassion, which I never thought I'd get to that place. But they live in this inner turmoil. And what they want to do is export that pain onto other people. So it's in the forms of gaslighting or whatever it is that they use. It's all about soothing that pain that they've mm -hmm. got inside, exporting it out onto you. And no matter what you would have done, you would have still been dealing with someone who didn't want to see that they needed to work on that pain inside. Yep, absolutely. And I think the key is, and, and I like to say to people now, is that no matter who was in that situation with the narcissist, whether it was me in the relationship or my best friend or whoever it was, they would have received the exact same treatment and the exact same abuse. It's never about you and it's never about you not being good enough or not enough. It's always about them. And it doesn't matter who's in that relationship with them. There, there is a, uh, you, you remind me at that very moment you said that, and you said that so smoothly and, and so well, perfectly said, is a, a book entitled uh, The Narcissistic uh, Epidemic. It's an old book. And it has a line in it, just almost exactly to what you just said, mm -hmm. that, it doesn't, you could plug and play whoever you want in that situation. Their mind is bent on destroying and creating a problem. And do you know what I mean? It, and and yeah. for me personally, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, we all want to see the good in people. And I want to go like, well, but maybe. And the book really highlights the fact you're fooling yourself. You get in with them and you will find out because they, they're bent on destruction and they've got three or four other relationships that they're ready to go to. Mm -hmm. And you'll find it all out as soon as you walk away, how mm -hmm. bad it really was. Yeah. Um, you've been really good at highlighting a lot to us. I'm going to read a few things here. Well, well, we'll end it like this. We'll do this. I'll read this real quick. Uh, why I didn't. Uh, hold on one second here. Can I get that? Hold on. Let me, let me do this. Why I didn't have you by my side 10 years ago. Uh, you are amazing. And the community that Paxton made is so great. Uh, I want you to know that's made for you. That is from Art for Annie. Uh, that is Anastasia, uh, who was the guest on the show. Her show is still up on our page if anybody wants to see that. But she is saying to you, Coach Kate, she wish, wishes that you were by her side uh, 10 years ago, she said. Uh, that's so you, sweet. You did not wake up this morning. Wait, you did wake up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> at 6 a.m. At 6 a.m. Yeah. Anyhow, that's a whole other story. Everybody has to watch the beginning of the show to find out. Um, so you did not plan to hear that this morning from someone. No. But someone feels that way about you. It's, uh, it's almost as if what you went through before, the foolishness and the betrayal and treachery that you went through before opened up a door for you. Uh, and this is a very strong woman that wrote that. I've yeah. spent a lot of time talking to her, and uh, she she really wants really wants to help other people. But for her to say that to you, for Susan Schofer to come on this show and say what she says to you, you've made an impact today that you have no idea about. But you will, you will, Thank you me. will. No, yeah, we'll we'll do something so you'll know how much these people appreciate you. You are an amazing, kind person, uh, and you are doing some coaching with uh, who again? So I have trained under the amazing Caroline Strawson. So if you haven't looked at her page, please do check her out. She's the absolute guru on narcissism. She has um, her own coaching qualification, which is narcissistic trauma-informed coaching. So that's what I've done through her. So it's all about coaching with narcissism. Also, a lot of um, therapies intertwined with that. So we come out as um, qualified hypnotherapists, somatic belief reprogramming and brain spotting, which is absolutely I have, amazing. I have a question. I have a question. Yes. If, if, if you take, a, take the time to talk about your coaching program, then I can ask this question. 
What is it about you that made you decide to become a coach? Because mm. there's, there's, there's 50 billion programs. Yes. There's, there's, you know, Lisa, Lisa Morano, there's others, there's, there's Caroline. There's, there's, but what is it about you that made you even decide to do this? Mm. I think the key for me was that I struggled for so long. I struggled for so many years and I have a health background and I thought, do I go back and I tossed up, do I go back and do a postgraduate in psychology? Wow. Yeah. Um, I looked at all sorts of alternatives, which didn't really click for me because you're quite bound with those particular courses on how you can help people. And then I found Caroline's course, which is, it's actually the first of its kind in this world. It's narcissistic. It's, it's completely um, focused on narcissism and trauma, which I really loved and it has a really scientific element to it, which really gelled with my, with my background. And I, I just want to help people. It's, it's, I realise it's my mission now. I've gone through what I've gone through and I now see purpose in my suffering and I, I'm, I'm just oh. so driven to, to get out oh. there and, and help other people and know that they don't have to suffer for years. Yeah. There is a light, and it doesn't have to take years to get there. You, you, uh, I, you know, for me personally, we we highlight a number of courses here. Uh, our website uh, that is up and uh, still uh, going through its uh, growing, of trying to put all of over three hundred some odd episodes on our page, and a number of things that are happening. But I, and we're going to be promoting courses uh, that people that have been on the show. We promote their courses there so that others can find them. But I'm always intrigued about the people like yourself that actually decide I'm going to be a coach and hear other people's story. Mm -hmm. I think I find people like, like you, and I keep saying that phrase, and I don't demean, mean it in a demeaning way. I find you fascinating. I find anyone that wants to be a coach truly brave and fascinating because they have to still look at something that they have left behind to help mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. And I think the world of you, Kate, I, I'm not uh, d d d putting any uh, shade or anything on, on Caroline's program or anybody else's program, but everybody that knows that comes on the show, I promote other people's programs that have been on the show. But I am saying the program that you took, you chose it because it fits for you, but I find you fascinating because I want to know why you wanted to do it. Because you could easily just go live your life and go like, well, people need to find out. You know what I mean? And I'm just going to post and I'm good to go but you get to hear other people's pain. That, yeah. That's just, that's cool. That's cool. I think you're cool. I just think you, hold on a second. I think you, hold on a second. Ow! You're willing to take other people's pain. And so <laughs> anybody that's here, please like, comment, share, follow her page. Um, uh, you know, Anastasia saying beautifully said, uh, talking about what you have just mentioned. Others, uh, like myself, my entire audience is fascinated by people like you, and or excuse me, individuals like you. I'm going to keep saying that, and everybody's going to, who knows me, watches the show, can, can endure that. But if you're new, I, by all means, I'm not insulting this beautiful person in front of me. But for you to give up your time and your energy to invest your resources and your finances as a mom, and you're out to help other people and help them get break free, um, everybody, don't waste your time. If you're not following Kate now and her coaching, either get a consultation, reach out to her, put the pizza down, spend the money. It's okay. Reach out to her because you're going to be back on this show. If, if you get, if you find it in your heart to say yes again, to talk about the parenting part, because people mm -hmm. loved you today. I'm looking at it on the screen. People loved you while you were talking and doing what you did today. Thank you so much. I uh, am, well, yeah, you know, at first I lost you because I, I you changed the name of your page and I, I know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait, she's telling Where's me she's going to be on the show. Where'd she go? It's like, where'd she go? But I, I, I figured it out. It, it took me nine years, but I figured it out. <laughs> you know how that goes. Remember, I, 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 what I said about a show prep or something like that. And you were like, we already did a show prep. I was going like, <laughs> listen. <laughs> I got so many, I got so many stinking shows that's happening oh, and stuff no. going on. I, I apologize to you for having you at 6 a.m. in the morning. I apologize. Please Thank go take a nap. Not. Nap if you're done after this. <laughs> please, please go take a nap. I am 
I'm so sorry. That has never happened. No, and I looked at please. it, and I said, it's Australia. I was going like, it. this is a bad time for this poor woman. I am so sorry. And it was too late. It was like, I said, I it's can't tell me. everybody that we're not going to have it now. And so thank you very much. Uh, it, it, I am going to send you some flowers electronically. I'm going to have my daughter draw up some flowers, and we're going to send you a digital uh, art or something like that, which she finds this out. She'll be like, Dad, you just committed me to something. Um, you have helped people stay away from individuals who damage, destroy, and discard people and show us that we are people who are worthy, we are enough, and that uh, we are worth love. And thank you for sharing part of your story and being here for this great chat. Everybody, I'm out of here. So if uh, you got anything to say to this lady, say it on a DM, send it to her. All right, go take your nap, Coach Thanks, Kate. Pastor. We'll see you later. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Uh, any Thanks last words? Me. Any last words before you want to go? Anything else? Thank you, everybody, for your beautiful comments and keep healing. You know, you are worth it. You are enough. You didn't deserve this, and there is light. Thank you very much, everybody. We're out. Goodbye. See you guys Bye. later. Thank you, Thanks. Kate. Bye.